Everywhere you look in the urban environment, we're surrounded by beautiful trees, but very few homeowners know how to care for their trees. Hi, I'm Tiana. I'm a certified arborist with Tree Shepherds. We're a full service tree care company in North Texas. And in this three part video series, we're gonna show you how to take care of your trees. If you're watching this video, you probably have a tree or two that you're wanting to care for. I'll go into more specifics about caring for your tree, just everyday stuff later on. But first I'd like to teach you how to evaluate the current health of your tree. So maybe figuring out if it's healthy or stressed or if it's in decline. Trees are very hardy creatures, but they're not invincible. Especially in urban areas, they have a little bit of a tougher time dealing with concrete and construction and sprinkler systems. Which trees tend to struggle more? I'm so glad you asked. Some trees that have a harder time here are usually trees that aren't originally from here, like maples or river birch, will have a harder time adjusting to our area. But even some of our natives, like post oaks and blackjack oaks, have a really hard time adjusting to urban areas. So what are some trees that do do well here? Um, I love to recommend mostly natives, so cedar elms, um, and other kinds of oaks. One of my favorites to recommend is the Mexican white oak or you can do a Chinese pistache for fall color. Trees are very slow growing organisms which means that they're very slow to show signs of stress. That's to say that your tree's typically not going to die overnight but rather over a long period of time exposure to many stress factors can cause a tree to go into decline. However, even trees that are in decline can sometimes come back. Some major symptoms that your tree is in decline or it's stressed is widespread canopy discoloration, so yellowing or spotting or browning of the leaves. Another symptom is when the very tips of the branches start to die back instead of putting off new growth. That's a sign that the tree is in decline or it's heavily stressed or just losing branches in general. You know, if your tree is losing most of its canopy, then it's in trouble. If your tree is looking particularly bad, maybe there's brown leaves on the tree or the branches look like they're dead, a good way to check and see if the branch is dead or not is to do a scratch test. And you take a twig and you just lightly scratch on the bark, either with your fingernail or with a pocket knife, and you should see a little bit of green underneath the bark if the tree's still alive. If it's dried and you're not seeing any green, that branch might have died. Wherever there's green, there's still life, so the tree could still recover. Now let's talk about root flares. The root flare is where the roots and the trunk meet and it's one of the most important parts of the tree. It's really important that the root flare be exposed to oxygen and completely unimpeded. So see, being able to see where the trunk flares, being able to see the beginnings of the main anchoring roots is very important. If your tree looks like a pole going into the ground, it's important to get it uncovered. So that'd be digging the soil back from the trunk of the tree to prevent any fungal issues or girdling and circling roots. Fungal activity is something you want to be aware of on your trees. This can show up as spotting on the leaves, parts of the trunk that are losing bark, oozing from the tree, or even things like mushrooms and conchs. On this tree, you can see an example of a conch fungus growing from the base. This fungus in particular is called Ganoderma root rot, and it's not a good sign for the tree, for sure. Wounds on trees are common and not usually something to be too, too concerned about. On this tree in particular, you can see a wound here, and notice the curling bark on the sides here. That's the tree actually trying to close that wound and heal itself. A common misconception is that you have to cover this wound or paint it, and it's actually highly recommended that you don't do that. The wound being exposed to oxygen is the best way for the tree to close that wound. So now that you know how to identify the different things that can stress out your trees, in the next video we're going to teach you how to maintain the health of your tree and address these stress factors. So we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.